everyone. We're back for another episode of Infernal Intercourse with me and Pastor Brian. So Hello. today we're going to be talking about the character of Maze. Uh, so because it, I find her interesting because here we have a demon character that seems to be completely different you know, than demons have been portrayed uh, in other things. So uh, initial thoughts, Brian? Well, you know, in that, I think it was the first episode, and I mentioned this, I was just extremely touched by her kind of everyone leaves me uh, moment, and especially, you know, when she was kind of projecting on Chloe and, you know, and had to face the reality there. Um, of course, then that leads to the sulking, which I guess is natural, um, and then the anger at Lucifer and the whole quest for her mother kind of a thing. Uh, that I found less interesting, to be honest with you, but... Um, I still, every time I, I see Maze's loneliness, her vulnerability, um, her default to how she's created, really, but to use sex as her way of getting attention and affection, you know, I, I find all that quite compelling and fascinating. Yeah, I, just to, and the demons in general on the show, I kind of find it interesting because, you know, usually you get this line about, well, Lucifer led a rebellion and like a third of the angels followed him and so god cast them all out and they're all down in hell and so demons are just ain't fallen angels but in this show we only seem to have one fallen angel Demon, whatever lucifer did it only got him in trouble apparently and uh these demons were then sort of created for hell and but what i don't get is when lilith says i i gave you an army he's like i didn't ask for an army and she's like yeah but you know they were useful or something but so Somehow Lilith creates billions upon billions of demons. There, there have to be billions of them because there are billions of dead humans. If most of them are in hell and you have more than one demon playing a role in their hell loop, you have to have a significant number of billions of demons. And somehow this one person birthed them all and sent them off to Lucifer. I just don't, I don't get how they can have mothers, I guess. Um, did she like magically just sort of create them and then she was their mother because she cast the spell or whatever? Um, it, I don't really get what's going on there, but I do kind of like the fact that the demons, I mean, they're not necessarily necessarily evil or unholy because they're kind of doing what they were created to do, right? They're, they're in hell as hell's functionaries because hell needed functionaries, so somebody has to do it, so they were created for that apparently. Okay, that's cool, and that would explain why our you know main characters can wander around and not get offended by I guess churches or crosses or holy water or whatever because they're not really unholy. Um, they're still doing their like God-given job or whatever. Um, but I still don't get how they have a mother and how she abandoned them and how that's such a big deal to Maze. I would I don't understand it. I mean, it's obviously a plot device that you know the fact that she feels constantly abandoned um, is one thing, but. When I just sort of think about it, it's like, how can you have billions of kids and then at least one of your kids is really upset that you weren't there to right. hold the same time thing. stories? Yeah. Yeah, do they all have mommy issues? You know, I thought the same thing. I thought. So I'm not, I am unclear on that. And now that Lilith's dead, I mean, is she down in hell in her own hell loop? I mean, I don't know. Well, I thought that was weird too. Like, so she died in the 21st century after all that time. Like, that. I thought that was a very random thing too. Like, is she really dead or? Does she die in every generation, or what? What's going on with that? Her immortality got put in the ring that he wears, right? So one could think that maybe he could make somebody else immortal, I would assume, if he could get that out of the ring and into somebody, Chloe or Trixie or who knows what. Or maybe he can use that to give Maze a soul, right? Because that's what Maze wants now. Back in season two, she was like, ah, you know, I'm cool with not having a soul. And then Lucifer's like, yeah, that's why demons party all the time. Because, you know, like, every day could be your last because you don't have an afterlife. You don't have a soul. And she's like, yeah, that's fine. And now she's like, now I want a soul. So I guess maybe she's known enough people with souls now. She has enough friends among humans that, you know, now this is something she feels like she's lacking. Well, and it's funny because what's the point for humans to have a soul if hell is how hell is? And if heaven is no great shakes, apparently, from what everybody keeps telling us. So, well, I don't know what there is to covet about having a soul. Yeah, yeah, the, the ultimate reward for having a soul is either eternal hell loop or getting bored in heaven, apparently. So. Yeah, with a bunch of spoiled, pretentious angels. Right? Yeah, I'm assist I, I guess most of them are 
I take to be more like the character of Remiel when we see her in season four for just like two episodes and she's all this, humans are stinky, they don't smell right and they're, and they're nasty and they lie and they whatever, not like all these other angels aren't lying all the time. But um, yeah, and you're like, wow, um, you, you could have you spent the past however many millennia hanging out with the human souls in heaven, but apparently you don't. So I guess, you know, because you're too good for them, you're too stuck up to, you know, go go down to the local pub with some human souls and have a drink or something. You know, just Well, and their mom, their mom didn't, never thought highly of humans either, right? And then, yeah. they kind of became fascinated once she was on Earth. But, you know, so obviously coming out of, there, there's no celestial appreciation for humans in the narrative so far. So, yeah, it, it doesn't make sense to cover humanity other than the fact that they do seem to become fascinated by humans once they're in L.A. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, so, you know, is that the reason why God originally said you can't go down to Earth and mix with the humans? Because because then you might actually learn something and become more emotionally mature? <laughs> I don't know. I, mean, I suspect these characters are just, you know, very one-dimensional because they've been sitting around heaven for, you know, since the beginning of time counting their toes or something. They don't seem to have anything to do. So, yeah, you can't really grow and change if you don't have any conflict or anything to, you know, work it on. Just yeah, and I don't know in this mythology, but in regular mythology, that is the role of an archangel, right, to, to interact between humans and God. Which would require interacting, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> and you would think some expertise or some, you know, <laughs> something to make you uh, good at your job. Or, you know, or maybe it's just to keep humans safe. I don't know. If anybody has reads, like, Tolkien and has read, like, Lord of the Rings or the Silmarillion, um, one of the points he seems to make over and over is that it's not good for elves and people to mix because once people realize that there's other people who don't ever die, then they want that immortality, and they will go to all these kind of lengths to attain it, which but they can't have it because that's the way the system's set up. So it's better if they just, like, never mix in the first place. Uh, because humans can't handle it and they can't get immortality. It, as if an elf, you're an elf, then you, because it's part of your nature, it doesn't bother you to live forever. But if you're human and your nature is to be mortal, then it bothers you and you fear death and you want to live forever, but you couldn't because even if you could, you couldn't handle it because you're immortal. So elves and people, you know, should never meet basically. And so I wonder if that's one reason why God would have said never mix with the humans because he doesn't want humans to be going, why, you know, why can't I do that? Why can't I have wings? Or why can't I, you know, come to and fro from heaven whenever I feel like it, or or whatever? We might want something that we can't really handle. I guess, but I have no desire to live forever. But you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think mean, having you know seven or eighty years might not be quite enough. But you know, a trillion years, eh, you know, I don't know what you would do exactly eventually. Maybe 150, but I think anything beyond that. <laughs> well, actually, that was like the point of The Good Place, too, at the end. If anybody's watched The Good Place to the end, it seemed, you know, once you get to the end of I don't really need to be in existence anymore, you can lay down existence and just stop being. So, you know, maybe that Which is kind of a nirvana, right? Like it kind of hands you a nirvana there. Yeah, but Maze doesn't have a soul. Now she wants one. Uh, but she spends all the time whining about her mom, and I just didn't feel... To, it just felt like it dragged things out. Like this is not really a character development that's interesting me because she's just getting really whiny. I think he used the word sulk earlier. Yeah, she's sulking a lot. You know. And 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 well, and I felt you know you I, I was frustrated by her anger at Lucifer too because you know Lucifer didn't want to go back to hell, right? Like so, I mean that was just all a weird thing, and Lucifer did that out of obligation, you know. And so yeah, she just to me, was the big whiner. Yeah, she's going back and forth. Like, she really wanted to go back to hell, like, in season two, maybe. I can't remember. And then at some point, she's like, nah, you know, I really like it here in L.A. I want to stay. And, you know, she gets a job. And she's got her, whatever, I'm sure she must be living, she was living with Chloe. And, you know, and now it's like, I went, and then it was like, you didn't take me back to hell with you. You left me here on Earth. It's like, well, I seem to remember narratively that you didn't want to go back anymore. But, okay and but then he reminds her you know Amenadiel could have taken you so maybe she didn't really want to go that badly but she still whines a lot it's like oh come on yeah 
that seems to be these writers' favorite plot device. <laughs> you know, Chloe, my life is ruined because I'm the devil's, you know, chosen one or whatever. Just a lot of whining. Yeah. So, um, so I didn't really get the character of Lilith too much. I don't understand how she... And it's such a cool character. I would love to have more from that character. Yeah. And I didn't... I, I think with you, I agree. I didn't really get Maze's anger at Lucifer. She knows he when he gives his word, he generally keeps it. So if he promised not to tell Maze where Lilith was, then, you know, he's not going to do it. And you have to do something like use Trixie to get the, you know, truth out. I was he never promised not to tell Trixie. But then why be mad at Lucifer about it? I mean, you, you got the information you wanted, and in a way, it doesn't break his promise to your mother, so she should kind of be all good, one would think. But they're not. I, she, like, like I said, she, she has some good moments, but yeah, I definitely... Uh, and I, like I said, overall, I think they're doing good this season, with just a balance in general um, of the characters. And But yeah, her big moment for me came in episode one, so it, it would be nice to have a little bit more... It, and there have been a few more moments of her vulnerability and, you know, and, and loneliness, and I think that's compelling. All right. Any final thoughts then? Kind of covered it. All right. Yeah, well, so. yeah. If you like this, hit like and subscribe, and make sure you click the bell notifications so you know when I put up more videos, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>